نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الف لام احسب الناس و یترکو و یقولو آمنا و لا یفتنون ولقد فتن الذین من قبلهم فلیعلمن اللہ الذین صدقوا ولیعلمن الكاذبین صدق اللہ العظیم رب شاہ علی صدری و یسر علی عمری واہل القدم السانی یفقہ قولی دس سورہ القربوت از موسٹ امپارٹنٹ اینڈ موسٹ پروفاؤنڈ سورہ آف دی قرآن دی گارڈنگ اے اسپیشل سبجیکٹ اینڈ دیٹ اسپیشل سبجیکٹ از دی پرسیکیوشن دیٹ کمس ٹو دی مسلمس اینڈ مومنین ایٹ دی ہینڈس of the disbelievers they are tortured they are persecuted they are given all sorts of pains in that condition what the muslims have to do so this is actually to give you a historical background this persecution from the unbelievers or disbelievers is absolutely natural and logical because people were living and they were under a system and there was no difference among them they were worshiping their idols and so and so forth everything no conflict suddenly a person stood up and he said it's all wrong what you are worshiping wrong false gods you have gone astray so there was naturally a reaction who are you to say this We are following our forefathers. We were living in peace. You have started a conflict. So this was normal, natural, logical, inevitable. But there are two stages of this persecution which came to the Muslims at the hands of the disbelievers. For the first three years, the persecution was only verbal. No beating. no physical persecution verbal and it was wholly and solely focused on the person of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he has gone crazy he is majnoon he has been possessed by some evil spirit he is a poet he is taking dictations from someone and then saying that this revelation has come to me from allah all such things were said to him so the persecution was verbal and centered on the person of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam why because if they could break his will power then there was no need of saying anything to anybody else the whole movement would have died down so they tried their best for three long years but muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam persevered and now they saw that his call is getting response from our society and they were very much perturbed about two sections of the society the youth number one our youth is assembling around him so it is going to be a very bad omen for our culture our system this is our hope of future this youth who is usman radiyallahu an a young man of the house of umayya the big who is musa bin umair who is sadib nabi waqas who is ali all this so number one their own youth and number two the slaves so the slaves were the oppressed people a, a, a section of the society which was exploited like anything they had no rights whatsoever a master who owned a slave could kill him at any time at his sweet will he didn't have to answer to somebody well just if you have a goat you can sacrifice it wherever you like eat its meat she belongs to you okay and he is your servant or maid servant or his slave or the slave girl you do anything you can kill them so when this sec- section of the society was now rallying round muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam for them it meant that the fire is now reaching the go down of the gunpowder 
it can at any time explode. So, now they started the physical persecution from the beginning of the fourth year after the coming of Wahi to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa This persecution, this torture increased in its intensity every day and it reached its climax in the fifth year after the beginning of Wahi. The youth were being beaten, they were tied in chains in the homes, kept hungry. The slaves were beaten like anything, anything. What happened to Bilal? What happened to Khabab and Arath? What was happening to the slave girls, to Sumayya? She was tortured and, and killed and murdered. And her husband, Yasir, tortured and killed and murdered. And son, Ammar, he was only spared when he said something, you know, accepting kufr by his mouth to save his life. But then, you know, he repented much of it. So these were the conditions in which one of the Sahaba is Khabbab bin al-Arath ta'ala. He was a blacksmith by profession, but didn't have any support in the society. Not a slave, but a person who had no support, no help. So now to him, you know, they subjected to the worst type of persecution. Fire was kindled, then the live coal was spread on the ground. He was called and said, take off your shirt. He took it off. Lie down on these cinders, burning cinders. So now the skin of the back got burnt and then the fat in the back, it got melted and with it, the wire and this was finished and cooled. So such was this persecution which was going on at that time. In this background, Khabab al arath says, it's a hadith in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari rahimahullah, that I saw Muhammad sallallahu he was sitting in the shade of a wall of Kaaba and he had taken support of some cloth with him. So I went to him and I said, Ya Rasulullah, O Masjid of Allah, don't you pray for us? Don't you invoke Allah's help, Allah's forgiveness for us? His help should come. These people should be stopped. Now these things, these persecutions are becoming unbearable for us. How much can we bear? But at this, the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was not happy to listen this. He rather, you know, angrily he said, before you there were people who came to believe and they were burnt alive. There were other examples when their flesh was taken off from their bones with coombs of iron. There were others who were first of all made to sit in a pit in the earth, in the land. And then, you know, a saw was put on the head and started sawing the body until they divided it into two. These things happened to those who were before you, who accepted and responded positively to the call of the messengers of Allah of their times. But they persevered. They endured everything patiently. Now you are making haste. You have to endure. But a time will surely come. When a person will go from Hazramoth to Sana'a, the whole breadth of the southern part of the Arabian Peninsula, and he will be fearing none else except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that time is to come. Presently, you have to and you have to bear with patience and perseverance. So this is the subject matter of this surah. Alif Lam Mim Ahasab and Naswa Yutraku. Did the people think that they will be let alone? An yakulu abanna. Only on saying that we believe. Bahum la yuftanun. And they will not be tested. This test and trial. That proves whether you really believe or not believe. Walakad fatanna lazina min qablihim. It has been our practice, permanent practice in the past. That we have tested and tried those. Who were before them. فَلَا يَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا So Allah will definitely make known who are saying truly when they say we believe. 
ولا یالمن القاظمین اینڈ ہی ول ایکسپوز دوز ہو آر رانگ فلی سئنگ اٹ سئنگ اٹ اونلی ود دیئر لپس ناٹ فرام دیئر ہارٹس ہو آر ٹیلنگ اے لائی ناؤ آن دی سیکنڈ سائڈ دیز ٹو آیات آر آف سارٹ آف یو نو اے ریبیوک یو مے کال اٹ بھائی بھائی دس ہیسٹ بھائی کمپلیننگ یو ہیو ٹو بیئر دیز تھنگس بٹ ناؤ آن دی ادر سائڈ ٹو بی لینین ٹو دوز پیپل ام حسب الزین یا منون سیاحت اور ڈو دے ہو آر ڈوئنگ ایول تھنگس ٹو اور مانس مین ابو جہل اقبا ابن ابی معید امیا ابن خلف ہو از بیٹنگ بلال لائک اینی تھنگ ڈو دے تھنگ ایس بکونا that they will escape our punishment sa ma yahkumun a very bad opinion that they have they will not be able to escape our punishment our punishment will come at this time we have allowed them so that actually we are testing those who believe those who say we believe in allah we are testing them but this test is coming through the hands of abu jahl through the hand of umayya ibn khalf But this is our testing. We are testing them. But a time will come when we shall seize these people who are doing these wrong things to our bondsmen. Man kana yarju liqa Allahi fa inna jalallahi laad. Another consolation. Whosoever hopes to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he should rest assured that that time of meeting with Allah definitely will come. Don't think, oh Muslims, maybe that time doesn't come. We suffer for nothing. If, they have, if that day of judgment is not to come, what did we suffer for? No, they should rest, rest assured. Man kana yarju liqa Allah. You are bearing all these hardships. Why? For Allah. For the day of judgment. For the reward of the hereafter. Don't let shaitan, Satan, whisper into your minds, Maybe that day doesn't come. Then what are you doing? Man kana yarju liqa Allah fa inna jalallahi laat wa huwa samiul alim and he is all listener, all knowing. He knows what is being done to Bilal. He knows what is being done to Sumayya and Yasir razi Allah ta'ala anhu. He knows it. And whatever their lips are saying when Bilal was being beaten at the time he used to say ahadun ahad 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 i believe in only one i am not ready to accept any one else so allah is listening a bonds man of mine is testifying to my oneness although he is being beaten you know like animals 